Hello everyone, I am Ardhan Dodei. You are watching Eddie's English Literature. Here in I am going to carry out a detailed analysis of Henry Louis Vivian Dirogeo's beautiful sonnet to the peoples of Hindu college. We will try to locate Dirogeo's love for his students here in this beautiful piece of poetry. It's also my personal favorite and I have the kind of same dedication for you. But before we start reading, we will talk to you a few of the key points regarding Bengal Renaissance and how Henry Louis Dirogeo's performances or his motivations there. For in both Keats and Dirogeo, there was a passionate temperament combined with unbounded sympathy with nature and philomen. Both died while their powers were not yet fully developed. Mr. Oten, the famous lines I have just quote, is written by Mr. Oten, a professor in English and history in Presidency College, Calcutta. Where and when Subhash Chandra Bose was a student, the Oten observation is correct. In fact, Dirogeo's love for nature and love for his country is evident in his writing, in his works, in his fellow actions. The time was really boiling. In early 19th century, he saw three things. The rise of progressive Hinduism, that is Brahmo Somaj. Secondly, the questioning. And thirdly, obviously, the learning. In all the fascinating pages of Anglo-Indian romance, there is no more brilliant and pathetic fear than that of the boy poet Henry Louis Vivian Dirogeo. His brief career, so full of effort and enthusiasm, flashes like an inspiration across the dull grey story of his unhappy fellow countrymen. Being a teacher, Dirogeo most probably gave the answers to these questions and his answers were nationalism, progressive nationalism in fact, but is there any Christian principles hidden in his teaching? I don't presume any conclusion here. Now let's concentrate on the reading of the sonnet which is still attractive and even important for the student as well as a teacher like me. Even though 200 years passed, it still has the relevance of making a relationship between a student and a teacher. And how deeply the influence can be that it made a new movement started. The young Bengali movement that made considerable fuel in early Bengali Renaissance. Dirigio became a teacher of English literature in the Hindu college when he was only 18. A poet as well as a teacher of poetry, Dirigio loved his India and loved the very nature, the very air, the very soil and the very people of this country. He also loved his students, which is best exhibited in this present sonnet to the peoples of the Hindu college. It was the glorious first in and the plight of British rule made Dirogeo apostrophized his country and his beloved students. Poor though his abilities may be, he will to his dying breath sing in defense and in praise of his country. And the moral, social and political strength of a country rests upon its youth, who is the building block of nation. Dirogeo addresses his sonnet to his pupils as expanding like the petals of young flowers. I watch the gentle opening of your mind and the sweet loosening of the spell that binds 
your intellectual energies and powers. That stretch, like young birds in soft summer hours, their wings to try their strength. Expanding like petals of young flowers, I watch the gentle opening of your minds. These beautiful lines contain a simile. The petals of young flowers and the minds of his young students are compared to each other. The point of comparison is explicit in the point of expansion. The uh, uh, and 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 uh, the the blooming of the flowers as the petals slowly and gently it gets the magic of becoming a flower. Similarly, young students getting the principles of knowledge and his teaching is blooming as a human being. And the sweet loosening of this spell, this is a metaphor. Blooming of flowers is like that of a magical spell. The growth of young minds is like that of a magical spell of emitting intellectual energies and powers. Your intellectual energies and powers that stretch like young birds in soft summer hours, their wings to try their strength. It just reminds the story of Tuntuni and her kids. Debunking the raw cat, finally when her kids took the first flight, the mother Tuntuni was the happiest mother. Dirujiu too compares the new learning of his pupils as the first flight. The joy, the ecstasy is from both the end. The students are happy as well as the teacher. Youth is the time of development of characteristic faculties. The moral and the intellectual construction of a being is possible at his youth and Dirojio compares his fellow students as expanding, blooming flowers where each of the soft petals are the tender awakening of knowledge. One thing should be remembered here, many of his students were older than his own age, even though they are, they revered their teacher, Dirojio, from the bosom of their heart. Now, Dirojio compares here, these students are as soft as flowers, as fresh as speaking petals. The beauty Dirojio learns in his teaching life is that they are as beautiful as these references to this nature. Now, again, he continued the lines, Oh, now the winds of circumstance and freshening April showers of early knowledge and unnumbered kinds of new perceptions set their influence and how you worship truth's omnipotence. The intellectual journey of a student with its full vitality, energy, powers can be mounted in its circumstance. And I like freshening April showers, early knowledge, early knowledge, the new, newer perceptions, newer renaissance elements would sprout new leaves of moral being. Unbounded desire of learning would create new perception in their outlook and drive it to the every field of social awakening or flourishes. Thus, they will become most influential force of the nations. And Dirojio wants this. Dirojio advocates for this notion. And Dirojio advocates that this kind of notion will lead the country free from obstacles, free from slavery. Brave and occult, steadfast and irremovable, unchangeable and firm. These should be the will of the young students and they will learn the truth and they will fight for the def for the defense of it bravely they will worship truth's omnipotence they will be the champion of truths and that championship will lead this country a champion a champion of freedom 
Next he continues, What joins rains upon me when I see fame in the mirror of futurity, weaving the chaplets you are yet to gain. And then I feel I have not lived in vain. Dirigio has enormous faith upon his students, the young Bengali troops. He would well see in the mirror of futurity the chaplets, the laurels, the feathers worn by his students in long run of their living. The joints would rain upon the devoted teacher with the yielding fruits or results of his students in their en route of perfection. Being a friend, being a guide and a philosopher, Dirozio Dirozio's ultimate desire of a teacher is to watch his students perfect social orientation with the worldly perception and intellectual beauty and if somebody is having that perception having that intellectuality having that socialization he would obviously be a champion of freedom so underneath his young troop will fight for the championship of freedom that their country was mostly needed at that situation. As I have just completed reading this sonnet, I must say this sonnet is a Petrachan sonnet which is divided into octave and sustained. But theoretically, this sonnet is more about patriotism and Dirogio's love for his students. And obviously, you can find out a romantic feelings are there. The Byron, the Scott, the Moo is everywhere here. His Sally, his kids all lives in these sonnets. Dirigio seems to have been particularly fond of the sonnet poems. His present sonnet at once gives his brain to his each for being an ideal teacher as well as its lyrical grace. With beautiful similes and metaphors he has decorated this sonnet like a true romantic he is a hopeful about his students and their great enterprise he is the notion that the indian hopes in intellectual flourishes in political empowerment rest everything upon the indian youth the zeal for lifting up this patriotic cause he finds a spring of tomorrow among the hostile presence and the hostile present situations of the colonial captivity. His students are like birds in the April showers that are blooming everywhere. Every spear, every cause of developing his beloved country. If his devotion and faith is taken into account, the sonnet is itself a rightful assertion of his patriotism. Typically, the simplicity and sincerity of tone makes the sonnet immortal one, attractive one. So I say, if you go through this sonnet once again and read, if you find any of the phrases attractive or if you hurdle any of the words or phrases difficult for you, just ask me, I will try to define it. And like a student, you should be respectful towards your teachers. As a teacher, I will try my best to give you my utmost. With that hope, I say goodbye today. Like, share, comment and obviously subscribe to my channel. Bye-bye.